The RMS Titanic strikes an iceberg on April 14th, 1912, in the North Atlantic Ocean, about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, Canada, and one of the greatest maritime rescues in history is about to begin. Titanic begins to send out distress calls at 12.15. Several ships receive Titanic's message, but all are either too slow or far away. But not all hope is lost, however, as Titanic's almost identical sister ship, the Olympic, hears Titanic's call. At 1am, Titanic replies to Olympic, stating that they had struck an iceberg. And about another 10 minutes later, Titanic again reported to Olympic. We are in collision with Berg, sinking head down. Come as soon as possible. Prepare your boats. Olympic was about 58 miles away when the SOS message went out. Captain Haddock of the Olympic immediately changed course, let up all the boilers to intercept her stricken sister. Just as Titanic's wireless operator instructed Olympic's captain, many of Olympic's crew are ordered up on deck to prepare the lifeboats. The plan is to ferry Titanic's passengers onto the Olympic, similar to what was demonstrated a few years prior with the sinking of another White Star liner, the Republic, which was rammed and sank by the SS Florida. At that time, it was believed that on the busy North Atlantic route, assistance from at least one ship would be ever-present and that lifeboats would be needed only to ferry all aboard to the rescue vessels and back until everyone was safely evacuated. But in Titanic's case, this has proved to be ineffective as there was no ships in her immediate vicinity. Captain Haddock of the Olympic orders many crew to prepare hot drinks and blankets for the survivors. Many passengers also offer up their cabins and beds, and any doctors who are on board to offer up their services to anyone who may be injured. Around the same time, the captain has the idea to usher all passengers to the lower decks, source gas lamps and turn off many lights inside the ship to squeeze every last bit of steam to the engines. Olympic begins her mad dash at 1.20am, making all steam for Titanic's position. Around 10 minutes later, at 1.30am, Olympic achieves the highest speed that she would ever record at an immense 25 knots. Approximately 15 minutes later, at 1.45am, Olympic would reach the large ice field that over the course of a few days Titanic had received several warnings about. Captain Haddock of the Olympic knew that Titanic didn't have much time left and hadn't sent out any messages in over eight minutes. We have to go straight through, stated Captain Haddock. She doesn't have much time left. And so Olympic would press ahead, smashing through smaller bergs and crushing in her bow at the waterline. Many crew and passengers began to get concerned about the crushed down bow, but the officers on the bridge and the captain were very assuring about the situation, stating that it was only the forwardmost compartment that had received damage, and as long as the watertight doors were closed, Olympic was in no danger. It is now 1.57am and back on Titanic. The bow has just went under. Titanic only has 23 minutes left to float, and Olympic is only 10 minutes away as lookouts spot the Titanic in the distance. All crew is put on standby as Olympic finally arrives as a wave of relief spreads among Titanic's passengers. When Olympic arrived to Titanic's aid, a photographer on board managed to capture the only known photograph of Titanic sinking. And after arriving in New York, the photograph was printed onto every newspaper in sight, and still to this day is one of the most iconic photographs in history. Titanic's lifeboats roll their way to Olympic as the deck crew pull the boats up. 
Titanic's passengers step off the boats onto Olympic's deck as many kneel down to kiss the deck as a sign of relief and the realisation that they are now safe. Olympic's crew and Titanic's passengers who have been picked up look on in shock as they witness Titanic taking her final plunge. Many of Titanic's passengers demanded the crew of Olympic to help the rest of Titanic's passengers still on board, but it would simply be too risky. So the solution was to wait until Titanic was gone so they could easily pick up all the survivors from the water, using Olympic's boats and Titanic's empty boats, as all of their occupants had already been offloaded. But the crew knew that they had to work quickly, as it wouldn't be long until they died of hypothermia. The rescue continued throughout the night as the survivors were counted. All in, 362 people lost their lives that night, with 1,878 survivors. After Olympic departed, it was announced that all concerts on board Olympic were cancelled, and in first class a fund was set up for families who had lost people in the disaster. On a foggy evening, Olympic then arrived in New York on April 18th to a vast crowd of people who thought it was Titanic just a day late, but as Olympic docked at the White Star Line Pier, the tragic reality began to set in for the families and the residents of New York who would come to greet Titanic as she completed her maiden voyage. For their rescue work, the crew of Olympic were awarded multiple medals by the survivors. Crew members were awarded bronze medals, officers were awarded silver medals, and Captain Haddock a silver cup and a gold medal, presented by Margaret Molly Brown. Haddock was also knighted by King George V, and was later a guest of President William Howard Taft at the White House, where he was presented a Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honour the United States Congress could present to an individual.